This is R2D Tech and in this video we're going to be talking about the Huawei P50 Pocket, so stay tuned. So this is going to be Huawei's latest foldable phone and clearly they've taken a lot of inspiration from Samsung here. It looks pretty much identical to the Flip 3 with a few noticeable changes which we'll definitely get into. But from a design standpoint, well first off it comes in three colours black, gold or silver and they all have uh, pretty unique looking patterns on uh, on the backs which I think is a pretty nice touch and makes the phone look a little bit different from the competition. Probably the biggest design change you've seen or the design difference uh, between the Flip 3 and this one is uh, the round, the small round display on the back of the phone and when it's folded, which is very different from what Samsung has. I think it's actually quite a nice design because the circle matches up with the size of the uh, camera um, cutout, which I think is a pretty clean looking design and it definitely gives it a unique feel. It's also quite functional, in my opinion, uh, it's pretty similar to having a smartwatch on the back of your um, phone. It does things like um, you can uh, read text messages, uh, see the time. You can even take uh, photos um, using it as a viewfinder with the back cameras, which is pretty standard on these kinds of foldable phones now. The actual display dimension is about one inch uh, wide with um, a diameter of 340 pixels. So um, it's gonna be pretty, pretty standard stuff. Now, when you actually open up the phone, you're gonna be greeted by a 6.9 inch, 120 Hertz display, which is pretty much the same as the Flip 3. So no differences there and obviously it's going to be a pretty nice display as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's been any improvement to the actual material of the inner display, uh, which means it's still going to scratch relatively easy, easily. So um, if you're worried about that, then this phone might not be for you. But it's going to be, I imagine, pretty much the same as uh, the durability of the Samsung foldable phones. One nice thing that Huawei have done is that when you actually fold the phone, uh, it actually folds flat. So the two halves of the phone are parallel, which I think is nicer than what Samsung had on the Flip 3, where there was a small gap in between um, the two halves of the phone when folded. Now, Huawei have done this by implementing a special hinge design where um, the part of the screen where the phone folds is pulled back into a teardrop shape so that um, the phone, the display doesn't crease as much in the middle, which should help with the um, long-term durability of the display, which is quite nice. There's also a hole punch cutout for the 10.7 megapixel ultra wide selfie camera at the top of the display, which will be pretty similar to the other flagships out there. For the cameras on the rear, you're getting a 40 megapixel wide lens, a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 32 megapixel ultra spectrum lens. For the specs, um, firstly for the processor, you're getting the Snapdragon 888 4G, and then for RAM between uh, 8 and 12 gigabytes of RAM, or 256 and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and a 4,000 milliamp hour LiPo battery with 40 watt uh, fast charging, and also five watt reverse um, wireless charging for your headphones. So onto the biggest talking point of this phone, which is probably the operating system. Now it's no secret that Huawei were banned from using uh, Android a couple of years ago, and they finally got around to releasing their own operating system called Harmony OS. Now, to be honest, it looks quite a lot like Android, to be honest. Um, there are a lot of um, similar design choices and everything, but, the biggest change is that you can't run um, Google Play services, so you don't have access to the Google Play Store. Instead, you have to download, download apps through um, Huawei's own app store. 
uh, which means that you won't be getting access to all the things you can get on Android and iOS, which is a bit of a pain and probably um, the reason why most of you won't get this phone because, well, simply you can't get a lot of the apps that you're used to. This is definitely a massive shame because Huawei is at one of the only companies releasing foldable phones right now. And uh, since they don't have access to Google Play services, they're at a massive disadvantage to the likes of Samsung who do. They also have a massive uphill battle um, trying to promote their own operating system against the two behemoths of Android and iOS. So this phone is going to be starting at a price of around £1,100. So maybe a little bit more expensive than the uh, Flip 3 from Samsung, but pretty similar uh, price ranges. So who's actually going to want to buy this phone? Well, the truth is it's going to be hard to recommend to anyone. It's a pretty similar offering design-wise to the Flip 3 from Samsung, but in my opinion, it's a massive downgrade in terms of usability as well as value for money because you don't have Google Play services, which is a, a pretty vital feature when you consider all the apps that come along with um, the Android ecosystem. Phones nowadays are a pretty integral part of people's lives and if they can't use common apps um, on a premium phone such as this then you really have to question whether the price of this phone is really worth it. That's it from this video. If you liked it please press the thumbs up button and if you loved it hit that subscribe button.